Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. This is the Little Bean and Me podcast channel. My name is Kayleen and I'm your host and today is April 3rd, uh, 2019 and I am finally filming a podcast. Hooray! <laughs> um, it's been a little while since I filmed and I feel like that's been a common theme over the last several podcasts. I've had breaks in between um, and it is not entirely within my control or something that I wanted to happen, but it is just something that has happened. So I'm learning to deal with that one day at a time. So I'm going to talk today a little bit about what's been going on in my personal life because that directly influences this podcast, my business, and all of that. Um, and it's probably going to be a majority of the podcast. And then closer toward the end, and I'll put a timestamp here in case you're not interested in what's been going on and you just want to see some yarn, um, I'll put the timestamp here so that you can see that. Um, as a forewarning, I haven't worked on any new projects. Um, and the common thing that I'm going to be talking about today is depression. For those longtime viewers, um, you know what I'm talking about. I've talked about it on this podcast before, uh, but for those who might be new, newer subscribers over the last few months, hello, welcome. Uh, apologies for the delays in filming and getting things out to you, but depression is a beast and it's been a very long struggle over the last two years for me uh, to figure out things that work and things that don't and how can I best manage myself my family my business and all of that so um, if you're interested in hearing about it and seeing some yarn then you know just sit tight get a little drink or a snack or something and we will just roll into it okay Apologies for any glare in my glasses. I'm wearing my glasses today because my eyes are just so dry and itchy. Uh, happy spring. Spring is coming, so my eyes just just hate the spring. Anyway, so the last two years of my existence have been not the easiest of my life. Um... I've touched on it several times in the podcast before about struggling with depression, having a hard time coping and dealing with life in general, um, but in the last six months it's gotten very bad, um, bad to the point that not that I would consider myself having been suicidal, but I had really um, terrible thoughts about myself and that's really hard to admit um, and so much so that it has been difficult for me to even complete daily tasks including getting up and taking care of myself and most importantly taking care of my children uh, which I've been able to do but it was extremely extremely difficult and very draining um, so things are finally genuinely looking a lot better I'm feeling a lot more like myself, a lot more level in terms of my mood. Um, I spoke with my doctor February -ish, mid month. I think it was mid month. I had my physical, and I had made this appointment back in November when things were really terrible. I'd gone in for a sickness, and I'm like, I need to talk to her seriously about starting medication for depression because I can't do it on my own anymore. And I know this doesn't has nothing to do with the fiber arts, but since this is my channel and my business, you know, um, I feel like talking about what is truly affecting me is very important because I put myself out there to you guys and I want to make sure that you know that I'm okay, even though I've had this long absence, and also to kind of touch on these topics because I know a lot of you may also struggle with the same issues or similar issues or struggling with mood or, you know, things that affect your everyday life that you don't really think about until it's there and then you need help from other people. So made my appointment back in November and I saw her in February and I said, listen, I'm really struggling um, more and more and more. It just kept amplifying to the point where I could not I could not do anything. Um, the last big thing that I did right before I went for my appointment, and it was my last post on Instagram as well, um, 
was a trunk show. So I spent several weeks, two or three weeks, um, preparing for a trunk show down in Plymouth, which actually went very well. I had some snafus on the tail end, you know, um, because I had an agreement with the shop owner, you know, we would do our split and then I would provide stock to her in lieu of cash splitting. So I, <laughs> I messed it up on the way out, but, um, <clears throat> It took a lot of time and energy to do that as it would normally, but for me, after the fact was when I had a really bad crash, as I would call it, where I did not want to get out of bed and I couldn't even take care of myself really. I really didn't care if I existed anymore. I just wrapped up all of this depression in this event and just kind of skated away and into this terrible mindset and I knew that I needed more help than I was giving myself or that I was capable of doing by myself. So uh, I got put on medication, rightfully so, and I'm very glad that I was. And of course, in starting something like that, I was very down about it, not in a way where I felt stigmatized or I felt like bad that I was doing it because I've never had anything against medication. I think medication is wonderful. Uh, but I was convinced that it would never work for me and that I would forever be doomed to depression and, you know, I would just be the worst case scenario because that would be my luck. And that was my mindset. Uh, fortunately, that was not the case. And um, I actually just had my first therapy appointment today, thankfully. Uh, it's been nice um, having somebody else to talk to about my issues and what's been going on besides my husband and family and friends. So <laughs> there's that. So the last month has been a little bit of a hiatus from for, from social media for me um, and a break from my business where I didn't do any Instagram posts or updates. I haven't done, I've barely interacted on social media. So yesterday and today really marks the first time that I've posted on social media since February, which was when I had my really bad crash after the trunk show. And I call it a crash, but it was it was a depressive episode. So um, pretty much anything that put me higher, like, you know, if I got my energy saved up, like, because really the main symptom I've had uh, that's really affected me is lack of energy and feeling tired and any exertion of any kind, emotional, um, thinking, physical exertion would be exhausting. So when any time I'm me filming a podcast in the last year, I would do the whole podcast, touch on whatever, and then edit, and then crash every single time. And this is something that I enjoy doing. And so I wanted to try and take the time away to get better, to take care of myself, to really start having a new, not a new start, but just forming new habits and new routines and getting a gauge on where my energy is right now. Because the way that it was before was not good. Um, anything that I was trying to do, any positive steps that I would take, you know, dyeing yarn or putting out a podcast or making a post on Instagram or Facebook would result in a depressive spiral for me. And that was the real frustrating part and sad part about it all was that something that always brings me so much joy also brought me into a place that was bad. It wasn't because of anything that anybody did or said. It was just up here and um, I was never able to fully stop the cycle from happening, even though I tried for a very long time. So that's why I went on medication and it's been very helpful and it's kind of given me the space to breathe, the energy to do the things I need to do for myself to make myself feel better, um, to get my head in the right space and to be able to start enjoying my life again, enjoying spending time with my kids Oh, I'm going to cry. Enjoying spending time with my kids, my family, my husband, um, where I don't feel like I don't want to exist anymore. So um, things are better. Things are good. Things are getting to a place where I'm happy and I'm feeling in a good place today to film. And so I'm going to do it. I am doing it. I mean, you're watching it right now. So um, 
So yeah, so I've been shipping out orders actively over the last few months, but I haven't promoted or posted anything on social media. So as you can see behind me after the trunk show, I did um, send a bit of my stock away, but I do have a bunch of yarn that is here, including some new work that I've done that I did some for the trunk show in February, and yesterday I dyed up a couple of more, and I'll touch on that in a moment. Uh, but I do want to say, if you've been struggling or you're having a hard time, um, you're not alone, and it's okay. I hope that you're able to reach out and talk to someone um, and to get yourself also on the right track, because it, it can happen, and even though your mind might be saying to you, oh, it can't, or it won't, or it will end in disaster, chances are it won't end that way. And you'll take the step in a direction that will give you the flexibility that you might not have right now, um, the emotional flexibility or flexibility in your energy to be able to take steps toward a goal of feeling better. So um, you're not alone, and I hope that you reach out to someone if you are struggling. <sighs> okay, so... I've been shipping out orders, haven't actively promoted or posted anything in the last couple of months. But yesterday I did do some dye work, which actually felt really good to finally do something for myself that makes me feel good inside, that I really do enjoy. Um, and it didn't make me crash, which was nice. Um, that creative energy and output an outlet is something that I really do need in my existence. So when I was never, when I was not able to do that and feel good about it, that was really hard for me because I just need an outlet, <laughs> some kind of creative outlet. So um, anyway, so the things that I've been dying, uh, I dyed up a couple of random orders here and there, but I was working on a collection that I teased a couple of months ago, probably January, end of January, early February, and the camera cut out. So as I was saying, I got a calendar for Christmas, which was the Bob Ross calendar. And so there are all of his paintings in there and quotes and things that he said. Uh, but I used to watch that show when I was younger and my kids enjoy the show now. And he always was an inspiration to me artistically, to explore that creative side of myself. So I thought I would pay a little homage and start a little collection uh, based on some of the paintings that are in that calendar. So just before the trunk show, I had dyed up two colorways and I don't think I had posted them at all. So these are the colors that I dyed. So you can see here, this is the painting that it was inspired by and here's the color. Oops. So it is shades of pale green and blue with darker blue speckles and kind of this um, wheat color. I don't know how to put it, but it's like a weedy, earthy yellow. Uh, so yeah, so that this was the painting. The printer didn't quite print it exactly to color, but... Um, it generally it picks up the colors that are in the painting. So this was the calendar entry for January 31st. And then this was the calendar entry for January 30th. So you can see I was choosing these right um, before the trunk show. So I'm not sure how accurate this is going to show on the camera, but this it, painting overall has this tone, this creamy um, greenish yellow tone. And so that's kind of where it's at. I don't think the camera is picking up the pale green color that's through this skein. So you can kind of see a darker part of it here. But overall, um, it has light green washes of color along with that same yellow tone. So it's kind of a, you know, like a hay bale type of color where it's... Um, or it's a really earthy yellow. I love this color. It's one of my favorite colors. You've probably seen it in a ton of yarn that I've dyed. So that's this color. So these were the two that I took to the trunk show. And these, I have three left of four. And then this, I only have this one skein left of the original dye lot because they sold at the um, trunk show. So these two 
are there. And then the two that I dyed yesterday, I haven't done a yarn order in months, so I only had um, six, seven skeins to play with. One of them had to go to an order that came in that I didn't properly do my inventory, so one of the skeins that a customer bought I didn't have, so I had to dye um, a single skein of the color. But this is one of the colors that I dyed yesterday. I dyed two colorways with three skeins per um, color. And this is it. So this color, I forget the date, but I will post the picture here. That is the um, color inspiration. So the colors in the photo are of a really, it's not as vibrant as this orange, but I really wanted to do like a fiery, um, bright orange color. Um, but there's a lot of orange and earthy yellow colors and green, and there's dark blue and some purples in the sky. And so it was a really beautiful sunset painting. And so I wanted to try and um, capture them all in the skein. And this skein is a pooling type colorway. So you can see um, I left it to be a little more tonal um, and variegated instead of, you know, a solid blue, solid orange, solid yellow, because I wanted it to be, um, you know, kind of like the sunset. So we have the sky and then the sunset kind of blends the orange and yellows together down here. And then down here is kind of like the land. So it's the yellow color and also some greens merging into the orange. So this is the colorway. And so it would pull and um, have more regular repeats. It's not a perfect straight line where I hand painted it onto the yarn. Um, it does have a bit of variation in terms of you know, how much color is there. It's not a complete solid, so it's more of like a semi-solid pooling type color with light speckling. So that's that one. And this one is one of my favorites. Uh, this is more my usual style of dyeing. So this has very light washes of pink, which I think are barely being picked up by the camera. Um, this is pink here pink, pink, like all of this is pretty much a very, very pale pink. Um, and then it has um, that's the same yellow color because it's a really common color in Bob Ross's paintings. And then some blue up here for the sky because the sky in this painting, I'll put it here, is a pale pink and it has really, really dark blue clouds in the sky. Um, I didn't want to go too dark with the blue. I didn't want it to be too stark of a difference, so I went with more of a mid-tone blue speckle. But this is um, generally speckled. It's not a repeat, like a pooling colorway. It's more of specks and tones of color to shift. So um, yeah, I really like this color. I thought it matched the painting relatively well. And it's more it's not super subtle. I feel like it's showing up more subtle on camera than it actually is in real life, but it's not um, bold, hard speckles. It's more um, fluid and flowing colors. So I let the colors bleed a bit. I let them soften out the edges. So there are some hard speckles where you can see the dark specks of color, but a lot of it has spread out so you'll get a nice variegated and speckled effect, but generally a lighter color scheme. <sighs> okay, so that was the Bob Ross collection. I did put it live today, so um, if you click the link here um, or go down in the description box, if you navigate to the Little Bean website, you will be able to see the, um, I called it the Happy Accidents Collection, and I made, oh my gosh, I made the cutest little sticker for it because I wanted to be able to distinguish it from other yarns, so I drew this up on my iPad, and I used, obviously, the likeness of Bob Ross, just a vector drawing of his profile, 
and a little pine tree in the middle with all these splattered, it looks like paint colors, but it says Happy Accidents Collection. Uh, so yeah, so I made those stickers, so any skeins that are part of this collection will get that little sticker. Um, and then also the picture of the color inspiration will be on each skein. So you'll have the yarn base, color inspiration, and the happy accident sticker all crammed on to this little band here. Um, then another color that I dyed up, I, in January, I received two, I moved my, um, studio in here, which you saw, and I was waiting on a couple of seam tables to come in for dyeing. So I wanted to move all of my dyeing out of my kitchen into here, and I did get them. Um, they're just Nemco food warming steamers, but they're, I'm using them to dye yarn. Temperature gets up nice and hot, perfect for setting yarn. Love it. Um, give me a little steam facial while I'm at it. Uh, um, but, um, when I was testing out the steam tray tables and like how long does it take to heat up and how long till it gets to temperature in the yarn, you know, what water levels should I use, all of that. I was doing a bunch of experimenting and I dyed up this color, which is called Clearly Full of Dark Magic. And per my usual style, it is speckled on a neutral base, but some dark purple and midnight blue. Um, that's pretty much it. It's a pretty simple color, but it is quite lovely, and I did this on my simple sock, which is a single ply. It's a lower twist, so not really suitable for sock knitting, but um, suitable for shawls or hats or uh, mitts or anything that you're not going to have this constant um, rubbing, because there's no nylon for strength. It is just superwash merino. Um, I did dye up some for the trunk show on Everyday Sock, but they sold out. At the trunk show but I still have a few skeins of this color in simple sock and yeah it's more of the bold speckling versus this one which is much more subtle washes and some bright specks but not as contrasty as this one so those are the things that I've done I did do some um, throwing, some clay throwing. I think I showed on the podcast um, some of the yarn bowls that I had made. If not, I'll have to rewatch and go back and see if I mentioned them, but I did throw some ceramic yarn bowls. Um, I think Christmas time? I feel like I did show them on the podcast, but um, if you're interested in small, smaller yarn bowls, you know, not the huge ones but they hold a hundred gram ball of yarn fingering weight they're just a lower profile so it's um three inches at the base four inches at the top and they're probably two or three inches tall but it holds the yarn nicely <laughs> I'll try and post a picture or put it up but they're also on the site as well along with the stickers that I made and I think I touched base on those in the last podcast um the little happy fiber friends, which I love, and I brought them to my trunk show, but they're so cute in my little sticker package. Um, but yeah, some of them are knitting, some of them are crocheting, one is a sheep. I think it's a sheep, a chicken, a squirrel, and a mouse doing some form of fiber art, so either knitting or crocheting. And... I still have some stitch markers left as well. Um, yeah, sets of five or six uh, little lobster claw stitch markers that I made also for the trunk show. Some of them sold, and I just brought the rest back home with me, so they are in stock on the shop. And then I also have, these are just the little sample slivers um, of my soap, but I did make a fresh wool wash batch and I have 10 bars of it left um, and I've been sending out little samples through um, if you order from me I've been throwing in a little sample sachet of soap which I can open up and show you I guess I don't know it's just a basic soap it's a hot process soap that I make myself in my kitchen um, oops, using Olive oil, coconut oil, lanolin, and castor seed oil. Um, it has 20% lanolin in the bars, so 
I think it's like 50% olive, maybe 60% olive, 20% um, coconut oil, 20% lanolin, and 10%, no, 50, 20, 20, 10, and 10% castor seed oil, or 5%, I don't know. There's 20% lanolin. I have to look up the um, recipe in my notebook. But I make it with a hot process soap making method, so I do it at a high temperature hot process so I can make the soap, the soap gels right away, and then here it is. So here's the little samples that I've been sending out. Um, it's just a little sliver of wool wash. It doesn't, it's unscented. Um, it just smells like the lanolin that's in there. It doesn't really smell like much. And it is a soap so it lathers up like a soap and you can use it to wash your woolens and it will condition your woolens um, you can use it as a soaking you know you can soak with it in the water if you want it will not lanolize it's not pure lanolin so it won't if you're looking to lanolize something like a wool diaper cover or something like that it won't do that but it will um, provide a little bit of lanolin back into the wool to um, condition it a little bit and soften it a little bit and also clean it. So I do recommend rinsing when you are finished. You know, if you're going to be washing your woolens in this, just to give it a quick rinse, make sure that there's no residue left over except, you know, the lanolin that sticks to the wool. So yeah, you just run it under the water um, until it's cloudy and then you can soak your woolens in. You can rub it on a stain if you have a tough stain on your sweater or shawl, gloves or whatever. Um, yeah, so these are the samples that I'm sending out, but I do have larger bars. They're about two and a half ounces. Um, I'll put a picture here of what they look like, but they look like this, but bigger, uh, on the website as well. Uh, so now that I've opened that, I have to rewrap it. <laughs> um, but yeah, those are kind of all the things that are on there. I, I did want to do the Happy Accidents collection. I was thinking of doing it as a club so um, each month doing one new colorway, maybe doing like a pre-order, but I don't want to put too much pressure on myself um, in terms of that because that just adds another layer of stress and I'm really just finally getting my feet back under me in terms of dyeing. So I think what I will do um, is I dyed up those, but I'd like your input as well. Uh, in developing some of these colorways or picking a painting to you know base the colorway off of so I have you know I'll, I've been saving my little <laughs> calendar uh, daily calendar tear off so I've been um, saving them and just kind of oops some of my quotes you know different paintings and so I think maybe I'll put up a poll or something either in the community tab here on YouTube or on Instagram uh, just to kind of gauge interest and also to gauge colors you know which kind of colors you would like to see coming up or styles of colors because there's a lot of beautiful paintings here with different palettes and so um, so yeah I'd like to see where that goes and I'd like your input as well so if you're interested in that just leave a comment down below and as always I'm reading them um, and trying to respond to as many as I can. With that being said, I hope that you're all doing well and that you're enjoying springtime weather where you are if you have a spring <laughs> uh, or a winter to come out of. Uh, we are finally just breaking into 50 degree Fahrenheit weather which is temperate uh, for the spring, really appropriate appropriate spring temperature lots of rain as expected but I'll take that over a winter time cold any day and the sun's been out more as well nice bright sunny days and the sun's starting to get warm so it's just very pleasurable to go out for a walk and to enjoy time with my family just kind of like getting out in the sunshine you know dusting off the winter time uh, blues and just you know enjoying just enjoying it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I would like to film another podcast in the next couple of weeks just to kind of keep myself on track here or to put out another video in the next couple of weeks, whether it's a tutorial or something else. Uh, if you have any feedback or input or something that you'd like to see that you haven't seen in a while or in a video idea that, you know, 
I've talked about that I haven't done yet that you're like, hey, where's this type of video? Just stick it in the comment section and I'll definitely be reading it um, and giving feedback and all of that. And yeah, that's really about it. So until next time, I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.